Hi, Sequels friends. Today is a new video day and it is another unboxing video. Come see what I got in this big ass box from Jomar. Jomar Wholesale. If you watch any other resellers online, you know that Jomar is a great, great place for some of your online sourcing needs. They offer new with tag products as well as some used merchandise and what I got here, which are vintage goods. Now this is my very first time ordering from Jomar, so I don't really know at all what to expect. And the only unboxings I've ever watched have all been new with tags goods. So this is gonna be a mystery to both of us. <laughs> and it is a true unboxing. I have not opened it yet. So if you wanna see what I got in my Jomar vintage box, and on top of that, if you wanna know how much I think it will sell for, what my gross projections are, and all of that nitty gritty, then you will definitely wanna keep on watching. It is so, so great to have you here. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Etsy, and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey. As I said in the intro, this is a Jomar box and it is a vintage Jomar box and it is my first time ever ordering from them. So I am pretty excited to see what is in here. But before I get to that, let me tell you what box this is. This is the Viscose Viscose Girl Viscose Sweater Weather Box. So there should be all sorts of warm wear, sweaters, coats, jackets, and all of that jazz in here. I am told that there should be 20 pieces of goodies in here. Box cost me, it's supposed to cost $120, but it ended up costing me um, $108 and then I paid $8.59 shipping so total was $116.59 and why did it cost me a little less because I follow the grateful queen who loves her some Jomar and she is the reseller that got me interested in even checking out Jomar and she had a 10% discount code that she graciously offered and I graciously accepted <laughs> yeah, let's get into it Well, I tell you one thing, I see some jackets. This looks like a men's jacket. Oh, and I hope my lighting is good because I am doing this later in the evening and I don't usually film later at night. Um, this is a Gap jacket. And it has a loop label and there doesn't look like there's any wash coats on there. So I'm thinking it's 90s. Oh, and now that I see that there was a patch here, I'm guessing it was 90s. That looks like some grunge, grunge time period to me. This is nice. I like it. It is definitely worn. There's spots on it. You got that patch on it. Um, I really like this. I have always hear that jean jackets sell really well. I don't usually pick them up in the wild because they're all so new looking and um, more tailored and more with the stretch elastic added to it and stuff. But this looks like a nice vintage jacket. Anybody recognize that? Huh, that's all I see with an address, so it has to be older because it has the address on the bottom. You don't seem to see that a lot past the 50s, maybe even 30s and 40s. Big oversized buttons, like I said, there's some grow grain ribbon detail at the collar, cuff, and on those pockets. Cool pocket shape. I saw something. What did I see? Oh, here. Oh, look, it looks, it has some slits in the side. I bet you it used to have a belt that went with it and maybe the belt will be in the box. But that is a really pretty vintage coat. I mean, this brand or label before. 
S-A-P-P-O, Sapo. Wheel on back here to show you. Cool pockets, fully lined. Like I said, it has a hood. Let me show you that material up close. Look at it, it's like a little Muppet. <laughs> it reminds me between that and this, where is it, the lining? This is what I saw when I opened the box and I'm like, did they send me a 1980s blanket? <laughs> That's really cute. Cool buttons too. Got another little bundle up here. Let's see what we got. Oh, very nice. Very nice. A merino wool made in Ireland sweater. Yay. I hear that these sell really, really well. Very, very nice. It looks like um, cable knit. I don't know, there's all sorts of other patterns in there too. And it looks like a men's because it says it's an extra small. Really pretty colorway. I just see like one, just a few pulls and a bit of, uh, an itty bitty bit of pilling, blah, 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 um, that I can always sweater shave, so. Laurel? Not familiar with that, but I mean, I don't need to say that with every single thing, sorry. Made in Croatia. And it is um, wool as well, very nice. I like the wool aspect, that means there should be some value in it. It's a cute pattern, like a herringbone pattern, and it's in a fun, bright color. Very menswear inspired, which is super trendy right now. Ralph Lauren collection, nice. Seems very Ralph Lauren. Let me show you the label. It's a purple label. I'm looking forward to researching this because I haven't seen a purple label before, which implies to me that this is special. Really, really cute. Real pockets, three button, even has a pocket up here. Very nice. This is a very vintage silhouette, cropped jacket, really pretty um, textured material, almost like a boucle. Um, this is made for Saks Fifth Avenue and it says it's pure silk. It doesn't look like silk. I guess maybe like a dupion, dupioni, dupion. I love the silhouette though. That would look suck ya with some high-waisted pants. I mean, what doesn't look good with high-waisted pants, but still. This is so freaking 80s. It feels, oh, okay, I see you. Another 100% wool. It is a coordinating set and it is cache. Oh my gosh. This meant the world when I was growing up. Okay. First of all, can we talk about this? Three button, like a cat eye button. Look at that waist. It's small. This has got, it says it's a 10, but it's a vintage 10. That's pretty small looking. This looks like a six or so for me, to me. Look at this. Oh my God. High waisted <laughs> pleats and a cuff leg, that pant silhouette is everything. Oh my God, I love it. Wait for it, we got a matching jacket. Oh my God, and it's just as 80s delicious as the pants. Look at that silhouette, all shoulders, teeny tiny waist. We have cuffs on the sleeves. We got shoulder pads, cause it's the 80s, why wouldn't we? open. It's got pockets and those big oversized cat eye looking buttons. Ugh, love this. It looks like IRKA2. And again, you got yourselves all sorts of embroidery, lots of money spent on that label or lots of money compared to what they spend on labels now. And it is a loop and it does say made in Hong Kong. No 
um, uh, washing icon. So everything about this, the silhouette, the mohair, the cropness, I'm thinking that's 90s. Cute, cute. Can you see all the fuzziness? <laughs> this is adorable. Um, it looks like inwear. <laughs> Not much on the label. And I don't see one in the inside, so I'm not sure what it's made out of, but look at this. I want to say 80s, but the label doesn't look super 80s to me, but the silhouette does. Look at her. Love it. A little bit of a, not cropped, but it probably hits at the waist. But for me, it's all about these puffy long sleeves. Look at that little puff there. And then also the really 80s. Sherberty marled knit. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's just Ann Taylor, but it is vintage. Again, an extra small. Not a huge fan of that. Button front silky cardigan. Oh, and it is. It's 100% silk. And it looks like there's a little bit of that, um, what, like a pointel detailing? This is so late 90s, early 2000s. You need a kick pleat skirt, some tights, and a shirt under it that matches or a white button down. Totally career girl in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, it's another Ireland sweater. 100% wool. It looks like a fisherman sweater. A little bit rough. It's full, it's true wool. <laughs> it's a little bit scratchy. And it says it's an extra small, which makes me think this one might be a woman's. Really pretty detailing with the knit. Look at all that. I'm pretty excited about that. What is this? <laughs> we got vests, people. It's the 90s. No outfit was complete in the 90s without a vest. Come on. And it's super soft. It feels like suede, but it looks like leather. And it is Jolly Jumbuck Leathers from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Love this. Love, love, love this. Feels like wool, little bit scratchy. Size four, you can see there's a trend with some smaller sizes in these boxes. Um, made in the USA, and it says wool mark. Look at this. Is this dark academia or what? I just sold for, I'll have to see how much it costs. I'll pop it up here. But I just sold a really pretty midi kick pleat skirt in mauve, and um, I made over my $20 goal on it, so it was not wool. So I would expect that this is gonna sell for a decent amount. And you have a really pretty plaid in a traditional blue green. Oh my gosh, it smells like, it smells like old man with cigarettes and leather in a vintage store. I, I'm trying to be intrigued by it. I can't stop. Oh, I love this. It's gorgeous. So there is a, I might be able to tack this, but there is, a, it, the seam has come undone at the shoulder. So that's a little disappointing. I may be able to, um, tack that. I don't know how much that's going to affect if I just disclose it and somebody else has to fix it. Look at this. We got zippers on the sleeves. We got zip pockets. It's in a um, more like a form-fitting silhouette. Really beefy zipper. All quilted in the inside. There is a lot of wear on the inner lining. This has got to be old. 
I, this has got to be old. I want to say older than the 80s because of the wear on it. And there's wear on the leather on the zipper. Man, it looks good until you really start looking at it. Like from a distance, as far as the wearability of it, it it's got a lot of life left in it. Snap detail right here. And this type of collar, it almost has like, um, it almost has like 60 vibes to it. I don't know. I'm definitely going to have to do some research on that. Leanne Barnes or Liani Barnes? Size one, so it's small again. It looks exactly like the other buttonholes, so I don't think it's a hole, but I don't see a button. So I think one of the buttons is missing up top. But again, you have plaid detail, a brown sweater, all of this knitted horseshoe looking. The equestrian buttons, so much detail. And then it has the leather, almost like a cropped leather on the back. That's really pretty. Again, kind of disappointing that it's missing a button, but a good place to be missing a button. Um, that seems like designer, but again, I don't know with this vintage stuff. <sighs> Everything about this sweater I love. <laughs> it is 80s gorgeousness. It is Christine Felipe, 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 definitely made in Taiwan. I'm thinking 80s based on the style, but it could be 90s. Thinking 80s. It looks like there's been a little repair here. You see a little bit of stitching there, which, man, if it didn't just fall there, I'm not sure I would have noticed that because there's so much goodness going on. And there does look like there's a little hole that needs some stitching there. But oh my God, we're talking brown knit sweater. It's a size medium. I'm an extra large. So we're talking about oversized mohair. And look, it's got all these little crocked leather pieces that are mixed and matched together, which makes it look almost like a cheetah or animal print. And of course it's shown off just on the shoulders. <laughs> oh my God, I love everything about this. I don't see any brand. It's just this really old school label that says made or um, this garment is genuine leather. But again, this, I was gonna say, looking at the silhouette, this might be 90s. This does not look like, this looks older than that. Huh. I don't see any other labels in it. I'll have to check the pockets, but it does have a zipper lining in it, which implies to me that there may have been like a fur lining or something like that in it. Wow, when I hold this up, the silhouette really looks 90s, but that label is definitely older than the 90s. And again, it couldn't be 80s because it's not, ostentate like oh uh it's not obnoxious enough to be 80s <laughs> maybe it's 70s i don't know i would have sworn it was 90s by looking at that silhouette but not with that label there's a little bit of weird with the rollover on the cuff there how pretty is that this is a wilson's leather but it is old wilson's leather and there's a label on it this was once in somebody's Etsy closet and apparently didn't sell. She was selling it for $46. <laughs> and somehow it got back in circulation. And it is Wilson leather, but that is an old Wilson leather label. I'm guessing based on this silhouette that this is gonna be 70s. Let me button it up and show it to you and I'm gonna have to wheel on back here because it is tall. Look at that. She is gorgeous. The belt detailing, the buttons, and then I really like the um, detailing on the pockets with the lines going on them. Now, I do see, is it just on the back? 
So there's a really pretty chevron detail on the back, but as with most leather, that's where the wear is, which is where the pieces are sticking up. So you can see here, there's some wear on it. But for a 70s jacket, it is still in great condition. Let me do the part that I love to do, which is let me spend some time researching all of these things. And I'm gonna come back to you with what I think my gross projections are and confirm, because everything looks saleable even though there are some, you know, uh, markings and flaws and, and issues with a few of the pieces. That's to be expected with vintage goods anyway, so as long as I disclose it and take up close pictures really showing it off. Um, so let me tell you, let me do all that research and tell you what I think I can do on this. I'm pretty excited. Okay guys, <laughs> I can't remember the last time that I was this excited about any unboxing that I've done. Now I know that my passion is in vintage clothing and so I do get very excited about things. And I also know that vintage clothing can bring good money, but it is a long tail item. So it is going to be sitting for a while until it finds the right buyer. But when it does find the right buyer, it will make you some money. I personally love vintage. I just, the nostalgia of things, the re, um, the reusability, the sustainability of it. I, I just adore it so much. So, um, visually and aesthetically, I really, really enjoyed this unboxing. Um, and I'm gonna tell you financially, not too shabby either. So let's go over the details. Um, I ended up receiving 20 pieces, which it says you will, but that is going to be 19 listings for me because I am going to put that crazy, gorgeous 80s loveliness, purple cachet, cachet suit together. I'm going to sell them together since the pant and the jacket match. So just as a reminder, this box cost me $120. I did get a discount code for 10% off. So I spent $108 and then the shipping cost me $8.59. So altogether, it cost me $116.59. The items that look like they're going to make the most money is that gorgeous men's leather jacket, which Things similar are going for up to $240. So I will definitely be listing at the high and we'll go down from there. And the other items that I'm listing for more than 100 bucks, and there are several of them I'm listing for 99, but I'm only gonna tell you the ones that I'm listing for more than 100. And that is the Laurel one, that lovely limey um, blazer. That is actually Escada which I had no idea, which again is why I love doing unboxings because there's so much to learn. And because it's Escada, I'm gonna list it for a decent price. The black leather woman's blazer that looks, uh, or leather jacket that looks almost like it's 90s, but the label looks older. That one's over 100. The um, Wilson's leather jacket that um, is the full length, that is actually, looks like it's from the 60s based on the label. I would have thought 70s based on the silhouette. But um, I went to Vintage Fashion Guild, my favorite place to go to um, first when I'm looking up labels to help identify them. And that one said um, 60s, so that's cool. A little disappointed there's not more value there, but that's still not bad. The Ralph Lauren purple label is actually their like runway label, the higher end label. So that one goes for a nice amount. That cachet, I don't know what the value really is, but I'm putting it for a decent amount because I just, if you're a vintage person like me, there's no way you're not gonna love that. And then that um, hooded blanket coat. So those are all the items I'm listing for over $100. So my gross projections on this box are coming in at $1,156 up to $1,736. That means everything that I'm listing at full listing price is going up for $736. I will then offer 10% offers to likers and watchers off of that. Um, and then uh, I hope to make at the minimum, if I have to mark anything down or it doesn't sell as I anticipate or I get a whole bunch of lowball offers, which implies to me that my pricing is too high, then I hope to make at least um, $11.56 on this box, which to me is insane. Now, going off that $11.56, the lowest price, if you cost average between the 19 items, that means that the average low listing price of these items comes in at $60.84, which is freaking awesome. 
for me who's been struggling to get my price over $20, this is definitely worth the investment because I have a lot of items here and they are higher priced items. Now, if I made the low end at that $11.56 and I took off 20% for all of my platform fees and I took out $116.59 for the cost of goods and shipping and all that, then my projected net would come in at $623. Now, if I can get any clo anywhere close to $623, hopefully more, but if I can get close to $623 on this box, which cost me about $117, and we're talking about six times the investment, heck yeah, all day long, I would be happy to do this. And I learned so much about some different ages of these items. I learned about some higher end runway style items and I learned about brands. So that in itself and I get to learn more about res researching vintage. So that in itself to me is worth the price of the box if I can make up my cost of the box back, but it definitely looks like I have the potential to make a lot more than the cost of my box. So as I always do, once I sell through 50% of these goods, I will provide you with an update because who cares what I think all of this is worth? We wanna know what it actually sells for because that's what really matters. That's what we know we can get for these items. So as soon as that happens, you know I'm gonna be back here giving you an update because I'm freaking excited for that to happen and I'm excited to see if this research and projections are accurate. So I would love, love to hear from you. Have you ever purchased from Joe Mar Wholesale? As I said, this is my very, very first purchase and I did go with Vintage, which I do not believe based on watching other resellers is where most of the, what most of the people are buying from them. If you've done any of the new goods or you've done any of the used stuff or you've done any of the vintage, please let me know. I would love, love, love to hear from you. I really like to know, especially when you're ordering from somebody first time, if this is realistic of what you would normally get in boxes um, and what you've had success with, I'd love to hear from you. So as always, thank you so, so much for tuning in. It is so wonderful to have you. I am very much appreciating your subscriptions, comments, and likes. If you did find this video useful, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Your thumbs up encourage me to create more content like this in the future. So thank you so, so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time with another video. Have a fabulous week, guys. Bye-bye.